If the Baltimore Ravens sign him, then it's literally over for NFL offense. This team keep it clean. Before we get into it, make sure you leave a like on the video, click that thumbs up button, and also subscribe to the channel and turn your notifications on so you do not miss a single video. Now, the Baltimore Ravens, Clifton Brown, he put out an article a couple of days ago that talked about the training camp battle for the safety position. Of course, the Baltimore Ravens, they have the expected starters, Kyle Hamilton and Marcus Williams, but he talked about all the other guys that are in the mix at the safety competition. Competition. Guys like Ardarius Washington, uh, Bo Bray, Sanusi Kane, and Jordan Tolles. So in this first paragraph, he talked about the projected starters, the guys who we know. And he said this, the Ravens have arguably the best safety duo in the league. Hamilton became an all-pro in just his second season, emerging as the NFL's most versatile safety. I don't think anybody could argue with that because you could put Hammy literally anywhere. He is super duper Kyle for a reason. Anyway, continuing, it says his ability to impact the game at all three levels will continue to be a key component of Baltimore's defense under new coordinator Zach Orr. Boom, we know that, we get that, we understand that. I know y'all know it already, so let's continue. Williams, Marcus Williams, has 20 career interceptions and his sideline and sideline range discourages quarterbacks from taking deep shots. If, this is a big if right here, if he stays healthy, Williams' third season with the Ravens could be his best, and yes, that has been Marcus Williams' only issue. That, that, that's it. That's, that has been his only issue. Now, that is a big issue, but that's been his only issue has been health. When he's healthy, that boy can play. Y'all seen it. Y'all know it. But what about that third safety? Who, who's going to be that third safety to step up? Well, let's read the second paragraph of the article. It says, after Geno Stone's departure to Cincinnati, the battle for the number three safety role will be a compelling storyline this summer. Our Darius Washington may be the favorite heading into camp, but... He'll face competition from Sanusi Kane, Bo Braid, and Tolles. Now, I got to figure, like, with Ardarius Washington, he has a leg up on those guys since he's been around the Baltimore Ravens for a while. But let's continue. This is the part that really got me. He said the Ravens could also sign a veteran free agent such as Jamal Adams, who visited Baltimore in May, or Justin Simmons. But, but, but how, how could they sign Justin Simmons? What would attract Justin Simmons to plan for the Baltimore Ravens says uh, he may be attracted by the chance to play for a Super Bowl contender. Now, with Justin Simmons, y'all know how I feel about Justin Simmons already. I've been wanting the Baltimore Ravens to sign him for the longest. But what would be some of the benefits of signing a Justin Simmons? Well, obviously, to have him as a third safety, like, that could be considered a luxury. But it would just be so nice. Don't you want the Baltimore Ravens defense to be as good as it possibly can? Yeah, I'm sure you do. But but get this, I looked up, because I had heard little rumors about it before, but I looked up, who, who has the most interceptions against Patrick Mahomes, who is still the Baltimore Ravens kryptonite? He really is. And it said this, Mahomes has thrown more interceptions to Justin Simmons than any other defender in the NFL. And that being uh, the number of interceptions is five. He's thrown five interceptions. Justin Simmons has picked Patrick Mahomes off one, two, three, four, five times. And it says the next closest player only has two interceptions against Patrick Mahomes. <laughs> Look, man, from jump, we go against Mahomes from jump. It would just pay so many dividends to the Baltimore Ravens defense if they had somebody who really understands the best quarterback in the game. Somebody who not necessarily has had Patrick Mahomes number, but had, has had a good amount of success defending Patrick Mahomes and literally taking the ball away from Patrick Mahomes and reading, dissecting, analyzing Patrick Mahomes. So Baltimore Ravens, if they could land Justin Sim man, because the secondary is already good. The, second, the secondary is already good. Like, think about that. You got Marlon Humphrey, healthy Marlon Humphrey, returning. You got Brandon Stevens, who just killed it last year. Of course, we talked about Kyle Hamilton and Marcus Williams. Arthur Millette, he was solid as well. You just added Nate Wiggins, a super, super fast, but a really, really great sticky cover corner. You got TJ Tampa, a guy who can mix it up and do so many different things. So you got a lot of versatility, but quality versatility in your secondary already. You mess around and add a Justin Simmons, too. Ooh, he's <laughs> Ravens come on now but then continuing it says uh the Chiefs quarterback is not alone though as Simmons is one of the best ball hawks in the game and exactly why he should be a Baltimore Raven because when you think about it like time is ticking training camp is less than a, a month away like the veterans will be reporting in a couple of weeks so if you could land a Justin Simmons, and of course, I, I don't know why he hasn't been signed yet I don't know what the holdup is it's the weirdest thing in the world but Every day that he goes unsigned, in my opinion, that price keeps 
dropping. It keeps getting lower. So that plays in the Baltimore Ravens' favor big time. Now, before we continue, I got to give a special shout out to the newest team, Keep It Clean patrons, my guy Living Legend, my guy Stone two times, and my guy Derek B. I appreciate the three of y'all deciding to become Team Keep It Clean patrons to show extra support to the channel because, again, that's something that is not a requirement. It's nothing you have to do, so that makes it even more special, and that makes me even more appreciative of y'all doing that. If anybody else would like to become a Team Keep It Clean patron, uh, you can go to patreon.com slash engravenviz. Any ways you want to support the channel, it's all down below in the description. And speaking of Team Keep It Clean patrons, our next question came from my guy, Derek. He said, hey, Engraven, what's going on, my brother? Hey, same old stuff, man. He said, as usual, I hope all is well down there with you and the fam. Please stay cool and hydrated in this crazy heat we're having. Air conditioning and ice cold water, please always have your own, my brother. But anyway, who? Uh, I was thinking, man, okay, so many Ravens fans may disagree with me on this, but they most certainly are going to think about it when I say it is something that you said for the longest, changing and coaching. Uh, meaning, I believe Harbaugh is, in fact, holding Lamar Jackson back from his true potential sure a lot of that falls on the offensive coordinator and lj but listen to what i'm trying to explain the last five super bowls from each season 2019 20 21 22 23 all of those teams had coaches who know offense and are offensive minded and before that it was the patriots displaying their dominance from 2014 to 2018 why bill belichick was so dominant and even in the early 2000s because the patriots even then showed uh, where the evolution of the game was eventually going to take place now fast forward to modern times Andy Reid won three Super Bowls with the same quarterback. Sean McVay, who is an offensive guru, has been to two Super Bowls and won one. Bruce Arians was known for being an aggressive play caller on offense, even though having the GOAT QB of all time, A.B., Gronk, and Prime Mike Evans made his job a wee bit easier. <laughs> but he did still, uh, he still did what was needed, and that's go out and win and capitalize on having such talent on the offensive side of the ball. Uh, when January came in 2021, then Kyle Shanahan and the 49ers, at worst when healthy, have gotten to a conference championship and two Super Bowls. Though they came up short, they still got there. The Ravens have not had the luxury to say that at all. Even the Bengals got there and they beat the Chiefs when they had Tyreek Hill. What I'm saying is John doesn't but butt in simply because he doesn't know offense at all. My fear is we're going to keep saying the same thing like we have been saying from 2018 to 2023 in the Lamar era and it should have, could have, would have. Though injuries were a factor in 2021 and 22 when we were uh, at full arsenal in 19 and 23 we just laid a goose egg and that fall back on the head coach those winning coaches I mentioned uh, would have came up with a better game plan than Harbaugh would have after all the captain is the only one to run the ship and know its coordinates but the captain is the captain that decides the destination no matter what Ooh, it's a powerful email right here um so is John Harbaugh holding Lamar Jackson the Baltimore Ravens back that's a, a really really good question and I think everybody certainly has their own opinion on it. Um, for John Harbaugh, uh, it's, it's just been really weird. It's been really weird that the same thing keeps happening. When the Baltimore Ravens have the most dominant teams in the Lamar Jackson era, they get to the playoffs and they come out completely flat. Uh, in 2019, we were hoping like, all right, it's an anomaly. Uh, maybe they just super young, inexperienced. Maybe they weren't ready for it. But no, that, that's what happened. And then this last year, we saw the same thing in the AFC Championship. The offense was flat. Now, I cannot say that John Harbaugh doesn't know offense at all. Because I know he has some experience uh, in offense in previous years. I mean, he's a head coach. Like, it, there's, no, there's no way a head coach. He may not specialize in offense, but ain't no way a head coach don't, don't know nothing about offense. Now, we have continued to hear, hear about John Harbaugh that he just lets his coordinators do their thing. Um, but you're the head coach for a reason. Um, it's scary to think about for the future because we have been hearing the same thing. We have been seeing the same thing. Um, and you just hope that stuff gets better. You hope that stuff um, just improves. Now, when you talk about uh, Harbaugh possibly holding Lamar Jackson back, it's weird because we obviously know what happens in the playoffs is, is ugly. There. It gets really, really ugly. But at the same time, Lamar Jackson got two MVPs under Coach Harbaugh, under two different offensive coordinators. Uh, in his first year with each offensive coordinator, he wins the MVP. That's just what Lamar Jackson does. So, is he really holding Lamar Jackson back? Like, what, where is the disconnect? Where, where is the issue? Uh, obviously, that's, regular, that's a regular season award, um, but playoffs seems to be a problem. And I, I don't know what it is that's been going on to why the Baltimore Ravens just simply, 
they just fail there. They fail. They fail. Even when they got the best teams in the league, they come up short. I know people have said, oh, yeah, well, uh, of course, only one team can win every single year. And that's true. I've said it myself before. It's only one team can win the Super Bowl every single year. But with the Baltimore Ravens, they should have gotten a lot closer throughout a lot of these years, especially with the teams that they have had, definitely in 19 and then in 23 last year. But they haven't. They haven't. Like you mentioned, the Bengals, the Bengals even got there. The Bengals, they even made it to the Super Bowl before the Baltimore Ravens did, man. They really did. So I think it's a thing where the Baltimore Ravens, they just, I don't know if they get scared. I don't know if it's, it's poor uh, management or poor preparation. I don't know what it is. They, well, you actually know, I do know what it is. They, they stop being themselves. They, they, they change up the entire game plan at the worst moment. It's like if you're going to change up your entire game plan, do that in week 17 or week 18 or something. Do that at the end of the regular season. When you already got a playoff spot, you already clinched, do that then. But to do that in the postseason, to do that in this, the, the divisional round in 2019, to do that in the AFC Championship in 2023 or 2024, why? Why? So something like that, them completely forgetting their entire identity, that falls on the head coach. Now, Lamar is not blameless in this entire situation as well because Lamar, has he's, he's committed some turnovers too. He's had some plays that he's missed in the playoffs. And I know every player has players, plays that they miss in the playoffs, but Lamar is not guilt-free when it comes to the whole thing because he's had some turnovers and whatnot. There have been some that have been his fault. There have been some that <laughs> he threw it right to the receiver. And, like, remember 2019? Boy, they just everybody was just dropping that game. Everybody. Uh, but anyway... Um, so it has to be a significant improvement, but in my opinion, it's just my opinion, I know it don't mean nothing from nothing, but in my opinion, in order for the Baltimore Ravens to really maximize on these good teams that they've been having, maximize on their, their opportunities in the playoffs, they got to stick to who they are. Not saying that because I know everybody was, oh, run the ball, run the ball, run the ball. Well, yeah, you, you run the ball for sure. Of course, you want to mix in passing as well. You want to be able to do both, but don't just throw running the ball completely out the window especially come playoff time it's like again they just they wasted these seasons where they again they had these dominant team dominant run teams and teams where the run was so dominant that that made the passing game that much easier and especially last year the passing game was that much more versatile because you had so many different ways and so many players that you could get it from that you could get production out of because of course with the running game you have you have a Lamar Jackson when you had Gus Edwards you had Justice Hill for a while, not in the playoffs, obviously, but you had Keith Mitchell. Uh, you had so many different ways you could get it in a run game, but then that made it easier for Isaiah Likely, Mark Andrews when he was healthy, uh, Odell Beckham Jr. here and there, Zay Flowers, Nelson Aguilar, so Rashad Bateman a little bit too. But so so they had so much diversity on offense last year, and they completely wasted it because in that AFC Championship game, they made themselves not the Chiefs. The Ravens made themselves one-dimensional. They got to stop doing that.